Press pause and answer the question. Now let's look at a new data set. So in a chemistry class, students are heating a substance from a solid to a liquid to a gas. So there's all kinds of like state change going on. And so here we have minutes that are presumably the substance is being exposed to some heat source. And here it's a solid and then it turns into a liquid and then it turns into a gas. And the result of the data is shown on the graph. So the question is, between which times did the temperature of the substance remain constant? Now this should be pretty obvious, but of the choices, the best answer is this one. From five minutes to nine minutes, which is right in here, and from 12 to 16 minutes, which is right in here, because we have temperature on the y-axis and that's where it was held constant, that's where it remained the same. So molecules are dancing. They're dancing around, they're all around you and they're dancing, and the rate that they're dancing is based on the air temperature. If the air temperature goes up, they dance faster. If the air temperature goes down, they dance slower, all the way down to absolute zero, and there there's no movement at all. Now we want a way to quantify this heat. We want a way to kind of give a single number rating to the heat. And we do that with what are called British Thermal Units, or BTUs. One BTU is enough heat to move one pound of water up one degree Fahrenheit. So let's do a quick question and hit pause after I ask the question and go ahead and answer it. How much, if we start at 70 degrees and we have a pound of water and we want to raise that pound of water to 71 degrees, how many BTUs do we need to take one pound of water from 70 degrees to 71 degrees? Go ahead and hit pause now. This was not a trick question. It's in fact one, one BTU, right? We raised one pound of water, one degree. Now, what about if we have two pounds of water and we want to raise it from 70 to 71? Go ahead and hit pause, answer the question. Again, not a trick question. Two pounds of water going from 70 to 71 degrees. That's going to be one BTU per pound of water, so it'll be two BTUs. Now, if we have two pounds of water and we want to go from 70 degrees to 72 degrees, how many would that require? How many BTUs to take two pounds of water from 70 to 72 degrees, hit pause. Like you might have guessed, four BTUs. Now, let's take one pound of water at 72 degrees, and let's go ahead, and I'm gonna, on the x-axis, I'm gonna draw heat in BTUs. And on the y-axis, I'm gonna draw air temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna start at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to take one pound of water and we're going to heat it up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, the boiling point. Now, how many BTUs will that take from 72 to 212? Go ahead and figure that out. Hit pause. The answer is straightforward. It's 212 degrees minus 72 degrees equals 140 degree difference, one pound of water, that's 140 BTUs. Now, if we take that same pound of water and we change it from 212 degrees of water and we're gonna boil it, so we're gonna change it to 212 degrees steam, how many BTUs is that gonna take? Go ahead and take a guess, hit pause and just take a guess. It's pretty remarkable because where it only took 140 BTUs to take water from room temperature to the boiling point of water, changing state from water to gas requires 1,061 BTUs for that pound of water. So there's kind of a takeaway here, and that is that the heat of vaporization is really powerful. It's kind of an important thing. So if you look at our graph, it's not quite the same as water. I mean, it changes, you see it changes from a a liquid to a gas right in here where we're adding heat but it's not getting hotter it's kind of a crazy idea we're adding heat but the temperature is not going up rather the state of the material itself it's changing phase and that itself takes heat so we're taking liquid and turning it into a gas at 100 degrees celsius and that sounds kind of familiar it sounds like water but if you look down here we're going from a solid to a liquid at 40 degrees centigrade instead of zero. So we're not talking about water, we're talking about some other fluid, perhaps a chemical 
perhaps some other element.